Hi guys, um, yes, oh, this is going to be a bit different, I'm actually recording myself on my little Osmo Pocket, and I've got this little tiny screen that I'm looking at, and uh, I've got a little yellow square over me, so it's sort of following me, I think, yes, yeah, right, so in this week's video, um, I just wanted to give you a tip for doing black and white yeah in Lightroom and it's something that cropped up in conversation um, last week um, when I was doing some training and um, yes it did so I just want to go through a black and white process of this image the image on the right um, image on the left um, inside Lightroom we're not going to do anything fancy uh, in Photoshop or anything like that um, so all I'm going to do is come over to here and I'll go reset yes I will and this is the image brought straight into Lightroom no adjustments made to it whatsoever and you're going to think to yourself oh, that's a bit overexposed Andy well funny thing is you see same old same old moan about Lightroom it does all sorts of crap in the background because if I open the uh, shot directly into raw therapy well, there you go see it's not overexposed at all no and I do wish Lightroom would stop making a mess out of your images but um, yeah anyway that's enough about raw therapy I'm not going to go into that I've been said that though if you go over to the main raw therapy website you will find raw therapy 5.8 is now on general release for Windows and for Mac and it's got the new capture sharpening that works a treat in there so if you are a fan of raw therapy like I say you should be um, go and download it from the main raw therapy or website uh, because don't forget it's free and it is a far better raw processor than Lightroom yeah and it's free yes so there you go but mm, it's not as convenient as Lightroom as I've said many times before and it is one hell of a steep learning curve so I did have a, a message off uh, one of my YouTube viewers the other day wondering whether he should go for raw therapy or go for dark table and uh, yeah I suggested he might go and have a look at dark table and see how he got on because um, judging by his actual YouTube channel he isn't a photographer foremost uh, if you're watching and I've got that wrong I apologize uh, but anyway so that's enough of raw therapy so we'll come back over to Lightroom and I'm just going to go and hit my nor process version swap and there we go looks a lot like it does in raw therapy doesn't it yeah and all we've done is fundamentally taking the stop of exposure out minus 33 contrast plus 25 on the blacks and put in this little subtle inverted s-shaped tone curve that's all we've gone and done so what we want to do is turn this into a black and white um, it's the test shot that I did for um, see now my D800E repaired D800E I hasten to add because um, I dropped it um, see how that got on with um, a 70-200 F4 because I want to take a 70-200 F4 over to Iceland with me in September and uh, I think I ought to get a 70-200 F4 because it's so much better than a 70-200 F2.8 for landscaping oh and so much lighter as well but anyway I digress yet again <gasps> dirty stop it handy right so what we're going to do is work towards black and white by trying to mm, get a maximum emphasis on colors and color separation within this image so the first thing I'm going to do is come down to the camera calibration panel remember I showed you this in a video a couple of weeks ago and this is possibly the most under demonstrated and misunderstood and underused adjustment that you can have access to in Lightroom and for all the Lightroom's faults 
it is really good so don't ever think I'm slagging off Lightroom because I don't intend to but the thing I'm wanting to do is to make in the black final black and white make this woodland seem very white and sort of give it a, a um, something of a pseudo infrared feel to it and funnily enough if I come to the blue primary saturation and I play with the saturation isn't it weird how much the blue saturation or the saturation of the blue primary affects the reds and the yellows and the oranges is really strange um, but there you go and um, let's play with the yellows and let's go and saturate those yellows up a bit but you don't want to be going too mad because the other thing we've got to do is we've got to go in and because we are changing the contrast ratios of colors and the saturation ratios of colors we can have too much contrast and so where we will get a bit of a problem is in the details panel with sharpening but we'll go there in a moment and let's just see if the red channel saturation makes much of a difference yes it does now if we push it too far it goes all very lurid and if I take it up to a 100% magnification you'll start to see possibly where colors start getting too loud for the image let's just play around with the hue you see if we change the hue of the red primary we can start bringing those strange magenta -y, very washed out dark magenta colors back into certain areas of the hillside which is what we want because the colors aren't really correct in the straightforward um, camera calibration panel where everything's sort of zeroed out they're not quite right because the white balance is a little bit off but you know what's your white balance on because there isn't a neutral gray in this image not that you can find anyway and when of course we do a black and white conversion it's all sort of to creative effect anyway so I wouldn't really worry about that but I'm actually thinking that as it is now it looks pretty cool and what I'll do is I'll actually give you this raw file um, if you're a member of my patreon uh, channel I'll give you a link where you can go and download it and uh, you can sort of follow along with me but I'm sorry that's only for patrons yes um, you know what to do yes go and join my patreon site yes mm link in the description below and in the end screen of this video yeah shameless plug right okay so if i now come to the details panel and we just go in here and have a look um it's looking sharp enough we've got lightroom's default sharpening on at the minute but what i want to do is i want to minimize haloing because as I said before once we get into the black and white conversion and we start playing around in the HSL panel then we can send particular color channel contrast even though they're in black and white we can send them over the, over the top a little bit if we're not careful and if we've got any vestiges of sharpening halos on the actual image itself while we're doing the black and white conversion um, we can actually emphasize those sharpening halos and things won't look very good at all so what I'm going to do is bring the radius down to 0 0.5 and bring the detail slider all the way to the left to 0 so that means we are fundamentally using maximum halo suppression and I might just go and take the sharpening up to 50 52 that'll do and um, but I'd put it on 50 if I was you yes so we are pretty much in the right place to start off with we wouldn't really want to print that image as a color image like that uh, well I wouldn't anyway because it is just a little bit on the Larry side so I'm now going to come over to the basics panel and I'm going to come here and hit black and white 
and yeah that's looking a-ok -okay. it's looking as i would expect it to look i mean if i go and re-zero um the camera calibration panel and go to um, reset red primary reset green primary and reset blue primary see it just looks a bit duller and a little bit flatter now i've got to come all the way back over to my history panel and come back to convert to black and white yes and there we go and it's just added just that little bit of pop to the image so for gunny's sake if you're going to do a black and white conversion don't forget the camera calibration panel so now what i want to do is before i go any further i'm i'm sort of not really appreciating this height of dead sky because it's a little bit boring if i say, say so myself um as i said i took this as a test shot more than anything else but it's come out quite nice but what i'm going to do is crop it and we're going to crop it to thomas eaton's favorite um crop or is it simon baxter's can't remember eight by ten yes and i'm just going to click done and uh, there we go now the next thing to bear in mind is that a reflection is fundamentally it's always darker than the real world above it and in the general landscape it tends to work but really and truly it's the symmetry here and the fact we're going into black and white and we are going to increase contrast and so on and so forth i actually think the image needs to be equalized top to bottom so we're going to pick up a graduated filter and we're just going to drop it in down to the waterline rather like that and then i am just going to bring down the exposure just a little bit does it need to come down a little bit more i'm going to use my pen i just want to try and get it roughly equal down here i'm just going to add a little bit of contrast i think go back to my trackball add a little bit of contrast it's got a little bit of clarity in it because i still want it to be different than the reflection but i want the tonality to be a lot more similar between reality and the reflection and i'm rather liking that as it stands all righty so now what i want to do is come to the hsl panel which is now because we're in black and white is now termed b or headed b and w yes and now we're going to make one or two adjustments i still can't get over watching myself on this little screen because usually when i do it on my gopro i have my mobile phone here and uh, yeah so <laughs> really weird this <laughs> every time i move i've got this little uh, little square following me yes <sighs> small things amaze small minds don't they yes so what we've got is our usual normal eight color channels that we have access to in lightroom um, but these will change in black and white response so we'll get fundamental changes to our black and white image let's go and play with the red slider does it make a lot of difference yes now you can see that we've got those um, patches of is it dead bracken or dead heather up here because we're looking back up the um pass from oh god i can net linguinant um back up the pass towards um if i click on here um, just there you can see the roof of the hotel that's got all the ancient climbing equipment in it um, where Mallory used to go and base himself when he was training in uh, Snowdonia for his ascent of Everest yes Snowdonia is that tough hmm try doing the black ladders in the middle of a frozen winter yes anyway oh, I digress so we've got these darker patches on the hillsides and 
if we turn the red saturation up you'll see they get less distinct so if we turn down the saturation of red we get greater distinction in these darker patches on the hillside in the distance and we're going to do a little bit more to those a bit later on let's play with the orange slider and i'll tell you now don't ever think there's any sort of mathematical way of doing this just go slider wanging and this is something i hate telling people to do and i hate seeing people do it but you just never know how these sliders are going to quite interact with your image so it's best just wanging them round and just seeing what you can do i mean look at that we turn up the orange channel and now that forest where the sunlight is for this birch birch wood not a forest birch wood now really does look quite awesome doesn't it now if we go to yellow which again is a channel we know is quite active in here so we can sort of make that channel start to glow or make those trees start to glow and maybe tug down on that orange saturation instead just to help maintain the finer details in there now if we go to the green channel push it all the way to the right and then pull it to the left right left positive negative now you'll see that in here we've got some deep shadows all right and of course it's on green so those deep shadows will be emphasized if we put a negative response on the green slider what we want to do is just try and maintain a little bit of definition in there and so i think i'll leave that at minus 45. now let's go and play with the blue now you can see what happens here with the blue as we turn the blue up or to the right we get less definition in the sky and if we move it to the left we get greater definition in the sky all righty now then one thing i forgot to do uh, when we were talking about that um, graduated filter was you can see that graduated filter is actually having an effect all the way out across here and I don't really want it having that much of an effect so I'm actually going to lift it up till it's off those trees I'm going to compress the filter as well so the step change takes place sooner I'm sort of going to rotate it I'm going to bring it down I think we'll go and drop the exposure a little tiny bit more probably about there I'll now go and turn off the mask overlay because it's doing me nothing but I'm going to apply a range mask because I don't really want it affecting these rocks here so we'll go to luminance and we'll show the actual luminance mask and you can see we've got strong red over here so what I'm going to do is just come to the shadow end of the range mask controller and we'll just slide it to the right until we remove the biggest majority of it from those rocks and I'll consider that done yes I will so I'm really liking this I'm thinking it's looking very very stark and dramatic um, but it needs a bit of oomph to it doesn't it so I think what we'll do is we'll go and put some contrast in it that's sort of made it come to life hasn't it and i think i might go and add a little touch of clarity if i add too much it's going to go horrible but we'll just add probably less than 15 clarity to it and yeah i'm rather liking that now i'm a big fan of the vignette as most of you know so i'm going to put a vignette on this i like priority and i'm going to bring it down to about minus 48 i'm going to get the midpoint slider and take it all the way to the left to zero and then i'm going to take the feather slider and push it all the way to the right to 100 
Yes, I am. Now, obviously our attention is now focused in the middle of the image. But what I'm going to do is just move the highlight slider to probably around 50. Rather like that. Now that's got a little bit of starkness. There is no two ways about it. You can tell what my main intention is in this image. It's highlighting this wood and it's sort of leading you into this wood. And you just can't get away from that. I think that looks quite cool. But I think I'm going to come back into the basics panel. And now we just need to be a little bit on the cautious side and bring the highlights down a little bit. I think we might need to bring the contrast down a smidgen and overall bring the whites down a little bit otherwise we'll lose a certain amount of this detail in here. Let's just go to the detail slider and let's put the sharpening amount back to 40, the radius back to its default and the detail slider back to its default. And now we've got a successful sharpening on there. And I, I don't think that's looking too bad at all. I'm going to come back down to the effects panel. And I'm just going to back this vignette off. Rather like that. Maybe take the highlights, slide it a little bit further to the right, up to 60. Yes. And I don't think that looks too bad at all. No, it doesn't. So there you go. That's just a quick demonstration, was it quick? I don't know, of um, how to make a black and white conversion. Um, I'll tell you what, let's just open that camera calibration panel again. And let's come back to here and just see if we can't affect any more changes and get things looking a little bit different. See, if I now move that blue primary a little bit negative, you can see what's happened now. I brought quite a lot more of those lighter mid-tone greys back in to this woodland here, which I really do like. And I think what I'll do is I'll come in with an adjustment brush and just with an exposure value of half a stop and a little bit of clarity in point of fact, I think I'll now I'll leave the clarity in because I can always come and change it. I'm just going to add some little areas of, you might call them, dodging with an adjustment brush just to make these areas of the far background look a little bit more interesting and a little less, hmm, how can we put it, a little less mundane. And if I turn that adjustment brush off and then turn it back on, I don't think that looks too bad at all. So we'll go ahead and click done on that. Have we made any detrimental adjustments to the image? No, I don't think we have. So there we go. So there's the before and after. And uh, yeah, so to get back to what I was saying, go and do a black and white conversion. But don't forget the value of the camera calibration panel mm, while you're at it. So uh, there you go, folks. Oh, that's proved interesting for you. Um, just a quick note. Um, Dave Mobs, good old Dave. Thank you, Dave, from XP Distribution. These are the x right has sent me up this baby. Yes. The i want to studio which is a replacement for the original color monkey photo and um, now the nice thing about this is as you, you could do with the color monkey photo you could actually use it for color profiling or printer profiling various papers and ink sets and printers so you could mix and match them but to be quite honest with you when you were moving into a bigger printer, like a medium format printer, um, 
um, the more complicated ink sets, you know, where you've sort of got 10, 12 colours, etc, etc. That colour monkey photo didn't do such a good job. Mm -mm 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 -mm. However, this, I'm going to be doing quite a few videos featuring this device. Um, this uses the i1 software and um, I used to use the i1 Pro 2 for doing um, custom profiling but I did actually custom profile um, some Calumet brilliant um, uh, not yeah brilliant museum silver gloss natural which is a lovely paper I really do like it the only thing is the cam profile that you download from brilliant is crap frankly it's rubbish it's awful um, but when you're used to using it like I am you sort of know what changes you've got to make to get a relatively decent print out of your machine um, so of course when I got this I straight away went and did a custom profile using this machine for that paper on my Epson 3800 printer with Marit ink so you can see I'm mix and match things um, for my own ends um, it's just a pure economics thing and um, so you sort of have to when you work with CAN profiles you have to get a feel for what's going on um, but I actually use this to do a custom profile which took me about an hour yeah and these are two prints um, which one's which now yes this is the print from using the uh, canned profile from uh, brilliant and yeah I mean I think it looks really good really really good however I'll put that up there there's the print wow which took oh god what 30 seconds worth of work in Lightroom to just circle this image and it printed out like that and that's opposed as opposed to ooh, what 15 minutes worth of work to get that so I'm sure you can tell the difference between these two prints um, this is with the canned profile from brilliant and this is with the it's tilted there so I think you can see that this is with the custom profile made with X right I want studio so all that is to come over the course of the next few weeks and months and uh, I wonder what what I want to try and do is make a set of videos uh, for you guys on YouTube which may well turn out to be somewhat definitive on the I want studio yes so there we go anyway that's it guys for this week's video um, useful I hope black and white processing in Lightroom only um, interrupted towards the end with a god knows how long infomercial uh, made by me yes interesting <laughs> sorry about that guys but just giving you warning of what's coming and uh, thanks to everybody who's uh, sent in requests for other subjects for videos um, lens choice etc etc all going to be coming over the course of the next few weeks so I'm going to be a busy little boy and uh, until the next video I shall see you very soon so stay well stay safe keep taking the pictures and uh, yeah to Roo.